Welcome to our second topic in Unit 1. This topic is what are microbes? I know we briefly discussed these in the previous chapter and we're going to be spending three chapters on each of these, but it's important at the heart of Chapter 1 to get this information down so that we can review it again and move all this material from short-term to long-term memory. And just that's exactly why this topic's important is it introduces these five groups just a little bit more once again so we can really start to build this picture of our five groups of microbes. Here are our objectives. We have three of them this time. And as always, I expect you to read the section of the textbook on this material, do the Connect Smart and Learn Smart activities to make sure you're prepared for the unit exam and for class activities with this material. And once again, if you have any questions about any of these or you're struggling, don't hesitate to reach out to me. So hopefully you remember from our last topic that we have five types of microorganisms and that they're broken down into two groups, eukaryotes and prokaryotes. Eukaryotes are the big cells. These are much, much larger cells. These eukaryotes form the groups helminths, which are worms, protozoa, and fungi. The prokaryotes are represented with the virus or with the bacteria, and the non-living particles are viruses. And as I've told you, chapters three, four, and five are going to talk about each of these groups more in depth. But let's take some time to familiarize ourselves with the major groups as well as cell type. So here's our eukaryotes, and you can see a picture of them on the slide here. As you can see, there's all these little compartments within the cell. Those are called membrane-bound organelles, including membrane-bound nuclei. That is the hallmark of a eukaryote. Eukaryotes differ in function and metabolic processes and their purpose in life, but they all have membrane-bound organelles. They're all complex organisms, and some of them are multicellular and can be seen without the naked eye, such as you and me, and some of them need a microscope to be seen. And you'll see some of those in lab when we do those activities. And some of them can cause infectious disease, and some of them can't. One of the big things to note about eukaryotes that cause infectious disease, because their cells are so similar to ours, they're much harder to treat. We can't use the same type of antibiotics that we would use to treat a prokaryotic infection. So here's our prokaryotes, and as you can see on the slide, this shows you the difference in cell size. Notice how much smaller the prokaryotes are to the eukaryote, as well as the lack of organelles. Remember, prokaryotes are, are all single-celled organisms and are much order, older cells. However, don't think that they don't contain anything just because they don't contain nuclei, or because they don't have a nucleus. They do still have DNA, ribosomes, and cytoplasm. So they do still have the hallmarks of life. And as we, can, as we get through this material, we'll note that those are really the three most basic components that all cells must have, our DNA, ribosomes, and cytoplasm. Lastly, we have our viruses. These particles are not considered living organisms because they can't replicate on their own. They have to have a host cell to replicate. So this is why they're considered partially living cells. They're the smallest of the infectious agents. They're significantly smaller. If you look back to this fourth slide, you'll see a size comparison between the cells so you can get an idea of just how much smaller viruses are. They also have only two main components to them. They have a protein coat, which is the one you can see in the picture with all the spikes coming out of it. And then you get, then they have their own genetic information. But their genetic information, unlike ours or prokaryotes, can either be DNA or RNA based. So it's a very different idea. And as I said, we're going to spend chapter five talking about these viruses a little bit more. This is the end of our really short topic on our different microorganisms. Please review those objectives and make sure you're comfortable with this. And if you have any questions, please let me know.